Hi GG and hello to all the viewers of JTV. My name's Hayden and I'm here to give you a slightly different perspective on the products that you feature on this show. Over the millennia, gemstones have inspired people. They've driven people crazy, they've started wars, there's just something about them. Their allure has attracted people from all civilizations and from all walks of life. What is it? Is it their objective beauty, their obvious rarity? Well, today I want to give you one more reason why you should love gemstones. It's their natural history. It's their geological story. The Earth is separated by massive plates which are in constant motion. They move at around about the same speed as your fingernails grow. They're carried on a conveyor of semi-molten rock powered by convection currents that start almost 3,000 kilometers under your feet. At ocean ridges, the convection currents force deep rock called peridotite to the sea floor. Within this rock, peridote, a type of olivine, one of the simplest gemstones in the world can be found. These gemstones contain iron in their silicate matrix. Iron in its purest form, ferrous iron, can become magnetized. It's called a ferromagnet. These gems feel magnetism, but they're not actually magnetic. And for that reason, we call them paramagnetic. Gemologists use powerful neodymium wand magnets to separate similar looking gems, as well as to identify a fake. Now, as the ocean crust crawls along the sea floor. Fine sediments and marine life fall on top of it, burying the oceanic crust under kilometers of sediment. Gem-bearing igneous and sedimentary rocks have two possible fates. They can either slide or subduct under continental plate boundaries and likely be destroyed due to extreme melting with water, or they can be lifted onto the continent as a structure known as an ophiolite. There they can be found by geologists, or they can be eroded by a river passing over them and washed downstream to a beach. The ocean and sediment that is subducted is saturated with water, which lowers its melting point. The sediments of the subducted ocean crust contain sediments given to by rivers and ancient life, such as aluminium and calcium, and these will go into making new kinds of gemstones. Jade is made of sodium and aluminium, two elements typically found in rivers. With no iron in its structure, it doesn't react to a magnet. But think about this, when you hold a piece of jade in your hand, it's no exaggeration to say that you are holding a piece of evidence of an event which is so epic that you can't possibly imagine. The destruction of a tectonic plate Once every 200 million years or so, two continents which used to be separated by thousands of miles will undergo a kind of a slow motion collision. But just because it's slow, that doesn't make it any less dramatic. The process forces land upwards to form mountain ranges that stretch for thousands of miles around the world. Today, the Himalayas are rising at a rate of one centimeter a year as India continues to collide with Asia. And the US's landscape bears all the hallmarks of a collision event that happened 240 million years ago between two massive continents. Today, you know them as the Appalachians. They're eroded and smooth, but once upon a time were towering peaks. And the Appalachians are only part of an ancient mountain range. The supercontinent on which they formed is now spread out across the world. The same mountain range is found under different names in Greenland, Iceland, Ireland, England, Germany, Poland, the Middle East and far-flung regions of Asia. It was probably the largest mountain building event that there ever was on Earth. With all that squashing of continents and high pressure geology, this sets the seams for our next two gemstones. 
Ruby and Sapphire. Rubies are red in colour because of impurities and this does make them slightly paramagnetic. Sapphires, whilst possessing a very similar crystal structure, can be a range of colours depending on elemental additions. So when you admire ruby and sapphire, just remember, it's evidence of an epic collision that no one can possibly imagine. Finally, we can't really finish without mentioning the mother of all gemstones, the diamond. Diamond is made from the same stuff as the basic building blocks of our body, carbon. But carbon, like every element, exists in different states depending on temperature and pressure. Diamond is an extreme crystal. It is formed under only very high temperatures and pressures, about 90 miles underneath our feet, where temperatures are over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. These diamonds are delivered to the surface through volcanic vents and eruptions. Over millions of years, these volcanoes are eroded by wind, rain and rivers, delivering the diamonds downstream for them to be found. Diamonds have an incredible story being formed under insane conditions, migrating in rising rock and magma, being exploded out of volcanoes, and being washed over lands. That diamond ring on your finger, it's seen and done things that no human will ever do. So I hope this geological perspective on gemstones has been of interest to you guys in America. And I hope it helps you appreciate your gemstones even more. You can not only admire their beauty and their rarity, but you can also marvel at their natural history and their incredible story. A big wave from England to our brothers and sisters in America. I love you guys very much. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.